All right, guys, if you have any questions for any company, we can uh, go through this. Uh, you can turn on your microphone, I presume, and ask. Are you trading now in American market at all, Igor? Uh, yeah, I do sometimes trade, not that often. Uh, and uh, maybe like a, a kind of mostly holding some of them and sending covered calls. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably a couple of weeks, sometimes one week. Uh, <laughs> Because uh, the market is, they have sh some uh, shares in Hong Kong, I trade Hong Kong. And the main reason is just because my time changed. Uh, I wake up in the morning, not like it used to be where I was sitting at night time. And uh, so I do trade Australian market because it's open around 10. I trade uh, Hong Kong market because it's open at 11. And I trade Russian market because it's open at 5. So I'm more focused on that and uh, so this is the way and the in American market I'm holding some positions uh, at the moment just to you know so for the growth because it's like I analyzed the market today there are so many opportunities in American market which is fantastic but a lot of unknowns now in the US market you see like if you think about it what is happening with the US dollars and uh, there is no much publicity here in uh, like in Australia about what is happening behind the scene. But uh, like uh, a lot of countries, they're uh, talking about uh, creating alternative payment system, like inter-border payment system. And if it happens, it might affect the dollar, like in general, because uh, in this case, a lot of companies will uh, try to change it to another uh, currency, like for example, Chinese yuan, and uh, they will sell off US dollar. And that's why a lot of analysts currently they are saying that uh, America is in a, a verge of very huge recession at the moment. Like, I mean, if the situation like that happens. Okay, uh, of course, uh, like uh, the guys in America, they're trying to prevent all of this. So, and uh, at the moment, it's a lot of, a lot of problems. I know kind of in this case. Also, the tension between uh, Taiwan, which is uh, increasing as well, and uh, if something happens there, similar to what happened uh, between Russia and Ukraine and uh, China and Taiwan, so it will also affect in huge uh, the situation with the semiconductors because majority of manufacturers are located there. And as a result, there will be huge shortage of semiconductors. And as a result, a lot of companies like Apple, Microsoft, Cisco, like big firms, they will suffer quite a lot. So, and like at least the price will definitely will be affected there. Uh, hopefully, the situation like that is not going to happen, but uh, we have to be prepared. That's why I'm kind of more focusing on uh, Australian market because we kind of live outside of the whole world. Uh, like it's quite here. When during the last GFC, we weren't affected as much as Europe. For are you planning to um, put together some some sort of formula for Australian market, same as we use four by four for American? Uh, I can do. You can use exactly. We actually during the, our retreat we were doing it. Remember we've done it. It's it just not not enough data like for Australian market. Where can we? Take yeah, so the the way you do it, the most important uh, factor, I presume we understand, that's why I kind of I went into deep, deep detail. So when you're analyzing, you look at several parameters like we've done now. So the growth, okay, earnings and uh, like, I mean, sales in earnings. This is one thing. Uh, then you look at consistency. Yes, we cannot put this data into the spreadsheet because there is no data. But think about it. When we're analyzing the quality, what we're paying attention to. Right, so uh, value line has certain like industry, uh, I mean, like timeliness, right? It has uh, safety, all these kind of parameters. But you can think to yourself, okay, how safe is the uh, GB Hi Fi? Okay, from what we saw right now, the company can consistently grow, right? So they open new stores, they have uh, similar business, so they represent themselves in every uh big like i mean uh shopping center everywhere gb uh, i don't know any retail big shopping center where there is no gb so it's everywhere so it has a good bargaining power in this particular case 
and uh, the company is invited when they open in a new store okay which is uh, pretty impressive right so this is one thing secondly we'll look at the uh, like margin facility so we can see that margin was consistent as well so second we'll look at their debt level we can see that debt is sustainable so they can pay off the debt it's one thing but secondly the growth of debt is uh, is not going as fast as uh, the growth in equity uh, so i mean in uh, assets so that's why the equity shareholders equity your value is growing faster it's similar to what can you imagine you have a mortgage for a house and then uh, would say you you can see that you're receiving rent from your house is in much more than you're paying the debt so and the equity in your house is growing every year so it's a good investment in this particular case so with this particular case uh, company as well so it's it's evaluating quality but then when you look at the like uh, valuation of uh, price you use p ratio basically we just simplified it right now so we looked at average was uh, twice 15 two years then it was 16 and a couple of years it was around 12 dollar mark 11 to 12 right so and at the moment eight so it's definitely on a low scale. So if we go back to uh, like P ratio of 15, so the share price has to be nearly double, like 90% growth from the current price. Right. So, so if you think, uh, so yeah, but how how you do like initial search to to come up with these best companies? So basically, what I've done uh, <laughs> very manual work. Uh, you can do it through screener. Finvis uh, will let you do that. So if you go to Finviz, you will be able to do it for, uh, you, you just choose Australia. And after that, you can do it in, a, in Australia market, definitely. So it's, uh, but uh, if you want what I've done, I just typed the most traded companies in uh, Australia. And then <laughs> I, uh, I just uh, second what I looked at, all companies which trade in Australia. So, and I created a couple of uh, watch lists. And can you see my watch list here? Not really. So, in, not, uh, am I sharing the screen? Yeah, we can see a little company. Yeah, but can you see on the right hand side where my mouse is? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You see, yeah. it's uh, so I can see the Aussie market, 212 companies. It's practically all companies uh, which are actively trading here. And then I can see Aussie shares, uh, 34 companies, which are kind of uh, the most traded companies, the biggest. Kind of. At least mm -hmm. uh, what I got it from online was I was searching it. So I put them in separate watch list. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I was like learning the Australian market, I would just uh, go through, okay, AGL, right? So and I see it and uh, I look just here quickly. So dividends 3%, P-Racia 5. Okay, so what's the company? The energy uh, limited. So it's an energy sector. Right, so alternative power generation. So you can go if you like this sector, you can start reading. But you can see it's only a couple of years in existence on the market, and uh, energy sector is so volatile right now. So you don't know what to expect. A lot of energy companies they actually making a lot of money now because of you know so they can sell at much at much higher price. So what happens to them if it uh, goes other way? And that's what I did. So I just went through all of them so uh, some of the companies you know pretty well so for example uh car sales here right uh, remember we analyzed cmg so it's uh, after our master class it jumped up and then uh, now it's recovering back so i'm looking at this company uh, to buy so gb hi-fi etc so there are a few more companies Rio tinta i'm paying attention to Rio tinta Rio tinta you can trade in u.s market as well but you also can trade it in australia market okay so, so. you see fmg here so this is my levels no no sorry uh you no no there's also at the bottom left corner it says stock screener so you can actually put your parameters in there and um I actually never use it here, so let's try it. So if you just make it bigger, like... Um... But where, where are you now, Igor? What platform is it? It's trading uh, view. Yeah, oh, it's trading, trading view. view. Yeah, Thank trading you, Dory. Cool. So if, you go, if you go to the filters on your right-hand side, mm -hmm. okay. click on that, 
and it's got all financials or whatever if you want right. the technicals it says as well you can see a market cap so oh, for okay. example, i don't Thank want you, small companies for example if i go for let's say maybe 800 million okay and then every volume a day you can volume trade uh, so it's more like technical analysis yeah if you look uh, on the financial side you'll get the uh, book right. values First, sales right. values yeah so you see current ratio price to book uh, price to free cash flow earnings uh, volatility uh, so you, you can trade on technical analysis as well. So yeah, pretty good one. I'm not sure if it is because uh, I have paid account or is it on the free as well? I like that. The free one does it as well. Does it as well. Okay, mm -hmm. this is uh, a good one. So I'm just wondering, trying to find P ratio where is the P ratio? So if you type in the where it says search filter, uh, where the little magnifying glass is at the top. <clears throat> And the description, you can type in PE. Uh, I think it's just, yeah. So you get P earnings per share, and then there's a PE ratio. It might be further down. Can you, can or price, you it might be the word price to earnings. Okay. Just try the word price. Price to book, price to um, book, price oh, to yeah, earnings yeah, ratio. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so price to earnings below, uh, below or equal, for example, we can say like twelve for example, right? No, that's it. Just, just that's it. Okay. So now if you close it, right, and you click on the little arrow on the, it looks like two arrows going around in a circle on the left side. Click on that. And that's oh. all the companies. But if you want only in Australia, you have to select the exchange to be Australia. So, yeah. Yeah, I would like to save. And you can call it Australian PE under 12. Six too much. Okay. All right. So is it here now or is it? No, that's it's a filter. So if you ever want to get to it, stock mm. screener. Okay. And then but, we'll see. but I found a lot of Australian companies that, uh, so if we go back, so I might go just put eight. Okay, so 31 March. Yeah, so in this case, you already can. Um, save screener as, so I can. Favorite. Okay. So very good. Yeah, thank you, Dory. Excellent. That's great, Dory. I've been using this platform for a while, never knew about this option. Yeah, yeah, yeah because I got used to using uh, Google Focus. And uh, because not so many companies here in Australia, so I, I go manually to them. Yeah. I am actually pretty happy that I subscribed for uh, Trading View. Uh, paid subscription so if how you, much is the subscription there i think i it was black friday sale and uh it was like 40 percent discount so because they remind me so if you want whenever is uh it's happening i can uh, notify like everyone so i can send email last time i sent the email about this so join at that time because this is the cheapest way to join uh, when it is uh, because i paid it for one year and uh, also i like i, I got on the black friday so it was a very good deal how is it better than free one 
uh, it just uh, the fact that uh, I'll show you now. So, for example, I have because I trade, I trade sometimes and enter the position, so I can have something like that. So two windows at the same time. Uh, hmm. I, I couldn't have it before uh, when it was free option. I can have even more, so I can choose like I mean three of them to have. Uh, also, I think I couldn't have two. Maybe I could, but I, I just don't remember now because I, I have quite for a while. But I never used this option. I can have uh, two windows at the same time. Okay, so I can open, uh, for example, index or can open one company here and then add another one. So if I want to, all right, with the difference. So for example, here, uh, if I close that one, to close it. So, for example, you see here, I can have a stock screen, all right, and here I can have the technical analysis. So, it comes together more convenient. Actually, how the okay, so and then you can have different settings, especially for small computer. I have a big computer, big screen, so for me, it's fine. I can set it, but for small screen, sometimes you don't need all these indicators just to see technical, but another one you can have with all indicators and everything. So, here I have five minutes chat so when i'm entering position and sometimes i, I like to play during the day and buy and sell uh, make one percent and that's it so but uh, yeah uh, in this particular case it's uh, good to have and also on the free version you cannot have all this watch list you have only one watch list which is inconvenient right so especially if you trade different markets Uh, this is the case. And it's showing real data? It's what? Showing real data? Yeah, showing real data, yes. And when it's opened, at the moment everything is closed. If you go for Russian market, for example, uh, so you see it's... That's what happens with Russian market. Today. All red. Oh my goodness. Probably I bought everything that I had an order to buy. All right. Okay, this is the story. So, um, okay, guys, do you have more questions? Yeah, what about QCOM? Oh, yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, you good? Oh. And you trade Russian market in rubles, right? Yeah, of course, yeah. But I right. trade it not from interactive broker. I have account uh, with the open broker in Russia because now you cannot trade anything from uh, interactive broker in Russian market. And what are you using to trade Russian market? Which uh, I use. Um, uh, uh, bro uh, like broker at Kritia, it's called at Kritia, at Brokerski Dom at Kritia. Uh, but you can use BKS if you want to open it from here in Russia. It's, uh, because we had few interviews, they invited me from uh, BKS. Uh, and uh, I know that you can open online for them. So I, we even in our program, in Russian program, we added how to open with a Russian broker because some people are afraid now to open U with the US market. So they want to trade Russian market and we open this an option. So and the, a lot of our students they live in Europe or live in other places and they still be still able to open account even they are located overseas. Yeah. All right, so Qualcomm. Uh, so that's what we can see. So very interesting level. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Right, so mm -hmm. uh, it was bouncing 122. So for the last what two years, right, one and a half year. So fantastic. So yeah, and this level is also good. So it, actually, I would definitely thank you very much, Lana. Welcome. <laughs> and the indicators are showing good candle. Uh, the volume starts increasing when it starts going. You see the first green candle, small one, right? So huge volume. Then the second one, we start growing the volume halved. So it's not a good, very good signal, but still, it's a very good level. Mm -hmm. So it might bounce back at least if you play it uh, 126 to 133. 
So it's five percent, even if you do this small wave. Okay, so it might give you five percent profitability. If you buy it and hold here. Twenty percent. Okay, probably I will go if I if I hold it longer, I would sell somewhere here at twelve percent. Still impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so very nice. Uh, but before I do it, of course, I, I look what is happening here. So P ratio is eleven, pretty low. Dividends. Uh, so you look at what happens there financially. So total revenue. 25, 23, 22, 22, 24, 23, 33. So it's a huge jump here. And uh, in 12 months, 42. So they started growing. Then uh, net income, if we jump straight away to net income, 5.2, 5.7, 2 billion minus negative, 4, 5, 9, so 12. So they're growing for the last few years. So the question is how sustainable is the growth? Because you can see sometimes they can go in negative error, so it, which is not a fantastic thing, but at the moment they're kind of going pretty well. So yeah, so balance sheet, uh, total assets 41, total EBITDA is 31, so 10 billion in surplus, right? And uh, total equity, uh, it's growing like it was 30 billion. I don't know what happened here from 30 billion and one to less than a billion. Very strange. So mm -hmm. definitely we'll try to find, <laughs> try to learn. Maybe they split the company or something like that. Uh, something happened because it's 30 times less and then 4 billion, 6 billion, 9 billion. So it's growing. So it's also a good sign uh, from cash flow perspective. Uh, total cash flow positive $6 billion. Uh, financing activities, they uh, uh, they buying back their shares, they issue new debt, and they pay dividends. Actually, they are paying that mostly. So, yeah, pretty stable company now. And let's uh, have a look. Uh, P ratio is 11, usually 20, 16. So it has potential double, even if the share price uh, earnings uh, stays the same. Yeah, impressive. Yeah, very good company. So, yeah. Have a look at uh, their last earnings report. Just listen what they're saying and uh, yeah, it, it can move all of this. Mm -hmm. And if we even higher, 120, 190. So, yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome. Anything else? Actually, there are a lot of companies on US market in a similar situation. Very close to support. Okay, guys. It's, it was uh, which companies do you trade in Hong Kong? They usually trade uh, only 10 cent, and like 700. And uh, Alibaba. So Alibaba? This, yeah. Now? You're trading it now? Uh, no, I mean in uh, general only. So at the moment I, I sold puts for 10 cents, uh, 700. Mm -hmm. I have puts there. So I just uh, Hong Kong. If you go, this is uh, Alibaba. You can see it's pretty good level as well so if it comes here so you can sell puts as well so we can't see sorry you, you oh, stop you sharing your screen all right here just sorry just now okay <laughs> because behind the camera okay share the screen okay can you see it on sound here mm -hmm. So you see it's uh, kind of support here. It's actually broke through. I sold it earlier. So I, I sold it like 310. So in here, so on this candle. And then it went down. So, but it's uh, until um, uh, probably next week, I think. So, and uh, I'm happy to buy shares because I already have done it. I sold shares here. So 
I, I was selling puts and I was put shares. At, I think at the price was three twenty and I got ten dollars, and then the share price went up and I sold it for three twenty four the shares. So now it's when it went down here again, I sold in the money three ten, and uh, now it's kind of went down even further. So most likely, if it stays here, I'm going to buy shares, and then uh, if I buy shares, I would sell them on those levels as well. So, and indicators are kind of represented pretty good. So now probably you can sell already uh, options for October, the next month. Igor, and Hong Kong market, you are trading in interactive brokers? Yeah, interactive brokers, yeah. And, and they have options? Yeah, they do, yeah. So it's the same strategy using as... Absolutely the same, yes. Yeah. yeah. The only thing I am trading the uh longer terms not shorter because they have high commission at least like i don't like the commission they charge me uh, so I, I would probably prefer to trade the hong kong market in the same way i trade russian market but in russia commission is so low it's practically insignificant uh so it's something like zero 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 like one percent on the trade um, whereas uh, in hong kong it's pretty heavy so I cannot tell you exactly the percentage, but when I calculate how much I sold and bought, I thought I'm making uh, profit, but then I realized that half of my profit went into commission. Mm. Mm. What about <laughs> Australian? Australian, not too bad, pretty, not that much. Are, are you happy with the trade in Australian market? Uh, I just started a few months ago, so but at the moment I traded maybe I don't know. Like uh, at least I uh, I've sold all my companies except uh, GB Hi-Fi now, so that's the only company I have. Uh -huh. So in, in all of them they done like at least five percent profitability. Mm -hmm, okay. Hopefully GB Hi-Fi will move to forty <laughs> like ten percent as well. But you kind of uh, more tend to uh, to stay in Australian market, Australian, Russian, and Hong Kong rather than American now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because American, you see, uh, my wife now wants me to go to bed at ten. Uh -oh. Yeah, that's what I was telling you before. It's very hard to trade American market. I lost half of my health and stopped. Yeah. So actually. <laughs> Uh, Mick he's traded, but he gets up in the morning. So I know um, Olga, he was trading as well. In other Olga, he was she was trading in the morning as well. It used to, I'm not sure what she does now, but uh, that's the way she traded. And uh, some people do prefer to just get up in the morning. And uh, at the moment, it's very early, but I mean, in uh, in in summertime, it's going to be closing at eight o'clock in the morning. So you can get up at seven and trade. Mm. Yeah, but, but all best moves usually happen at the beginning of the session, at the end. It and in the end, so in the beginning and in the end. So. The end too? Yeah, so yeah. So usually like that, because some of people that open a position in the morning and then close them in the evening, so you actually can uh, get a bargain there as well. A lot of my Russian trades, I because I trade the opening when it opens around 5 p.m. at our time. And then I just, like, I already not waiting until about one o'clock in the morning, so 12 o'clock when it's closing. So, and then next day I can see that uh, broker, because broker notifies me if there is a trade, so I can say, oh, position is closed. So most likely while I was talking to you, I have a few trades here in Russian market. Yeah, I can see it, yeah. Oh my goodness, I, I bought four of them. And uh, now they're all in minus. Because the market Russian dropped down quite a lot. If this is the thing, while you're talking and not paying attention to the market, I could buy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, now I'm going to put all the orders to uh, close the position. I mean, with a profit and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Russian market is very undervalued as well. A lot of companies I buy P races five, six, seven, so very, very low. And dividends, some of them 20%. 20%. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, 
But Igor, if we trade Russian market, we have to pay taxes in Russian market to Russian. Yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, but Igor, what what is the solution now for Russians who hold IBKR so, in? So, for America? example, look at this uh, dividend yield, eighteen percent on MTS. It's similar to our, uh, I would say, Vodafone or uh, you know Tesla, this like that. So what are you saying? What is the solution now for Russians who who is trading via IBKR and cannot move their money now at all? Um, what do you mean you cannot move money? Well, you cannot take it out. You cannot put it in. You can trade. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, um, Victor is now opened account. He. Um, loaded application i think in the beginning of the week and on friday it was approved in ad and at the moment he is trying to find different ways how to pay money to id so we're doing especially like this type of uh, research mm -hmm. and see what is going to happen okay because um olga was asking me as well like yeah but uh yeah what yeah. to do yeah, understand. Yeah. Okay, when we know, we we notify about it. So because at the moment it's like everything changes so quickly. Uh, I know that a lot of people what they do they go to Turkey, they open account there. Some of them they go to Kazakhstan, they open account, but like I mean bank account there, getting cards, and after that uh, from because from Turkey I think there is a transaction, so people can tra transfer money from Turkey. Turkey kind of goes against. Uh, all the sanctions uh, uh, like uh, European Union because we have huge trade in, uh, with Turkey. Turkey doesn't want to, to lose all these Russian tourists in uh, like uh, in their hotel. Yeah, yeah, I understand. But we're talking about now to open an account. But I'm talking about people who already has this money kind of frozen in IB accounts. What do you mean frozen? Money is not frozen. Not, no, no, they, no, they, yeah, they can trade, but they cannot. The problem is out. that Russian banks, if you transfer money to Russian banks, the foreign currency, they're going to tax you, like, I mean, a lot. So that's why it's not convenient. And you cannot buy rubles now in, uh, like, in an in interactive broker because uh, they don't have access to Russian market. So this is the issue. You can transfer the money to any other uh, bank. Like, I mean, if you have bank in Europe, in Australia, and the money can be transferred, but they have to be, the account has to be on the name of the person. So that's why if Olga goes to Turkey and open bank account, so she can transfer the money to Turkey and then withdraw it if she wants to, or she can transfer if much easier to Kazakhstan, because Kazakhstan, like if you open and get a banking card in Kazakhstan, you can use this card in Russia as well. Like, I mean, just, same as I was doing, I was getting money in Russia and I was spending it here, it used to. Now I cannot do that. So, uh, but if, in, like, I mean, same as I was traveling to Russia, I couldn't use Australian market because of the sanctions, right? Uh, but uh, between Kazakhstan and Europe, there is no sanction. So you can easily transfer money uh, in any currency you want, like, I mean, whatever bank account you opened. And then, because there is no any limitation in trading between Kazakhstan and Russia, so you can like use the uh, bank card from Kazakhstan and pay everything in uh, in Russia. So or transfer money in direct deposit from Kazakhstan to Russian market uh, to Russian bank already. So there are ways. I know that some people do it with China, similar way. So you can open in China and then do exactly the same thing. And that's why we're at the moment researching. I know that few people uh, did that. They told me so, but we are trying to actually do it ourselves and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the story. But you don't have to worry about it. You can trust. No, 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 not me. It's just because uh, yeah. I'm talking to Tatiana and Olga. And yeah. That's yeah. why. Yeah. I understand. I understand. All right, guys. Uh, uh, let's complete our master class for tonight. So <laughs> have a good trading session, make a lot of money, and I'll see you next week. All right. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, Thank you. Okay. See you next week. Okay, all the best. Bye-bye. Bye.